Tutorials and step-by-step -step guides are pretty much dead because of this new AI innovation. Something that I've been obsessing on in the last few days made my workflows so much faster and it's actually a free tool. I highly recommend checking it out. We'll show you in this video two examples of how this can streamline, accelerate your learning curve or any um, technical process or any new software. Basically, whenever I start using a new tool, make it a point to watch a few tutorials like one hour crash course tutorial about this specific tool just so I'll know all the features that are available in the tool because very often just dive right into the tool without understanding the capabilities of the tool and then later on realize some of the stuff or some of the struggles or challenges that we encountered or actually could have solved them if we just knew about the features in so this is why I always advise my clients and friends whenever you start a new tool, whether it's Trello or VS Code or Savio or Google Ads, Facebook Ads, first take a crash course of one hour, two hours long just to understand the whole scope of capabilities. So you know exactly which what the software has to offer. Now that was the practice that I've been using so far. Now I started using Google uh, real-time AI studio in order to advise me and teach me about new solutions. Basically, this is a free um, solution provided by Google. So what you can do, you can come and share your screen. Then Google will instruct you regarding new tool or basically answer any question that you have. I made a video about this other day about how you can use this to be over your shoulder and give you advice about copy and design, stuff like this. But this is another use case that I feel very powerful. So let me show you how exactly. So I come here. My screen. Okay, I understand you're sharing your screen. Is there anything specific you'd like me to do with it? Or are you just showing it? Yes, I want you to instruct me and guide me and teach me about Hello. Sure, I can help you with that. So you would like me to instruct and guide you on how to use Trello? Exactly. First of all, give me an overview about what is Trello and then instruct me how I can build a Kanban board. Understood. First, I'll give you an overview of what Trello is, and then I'll guide you on how to build a Kanban board. Is that okay? Sure. Stop asking questions. Just move forward. Okay, I understand. I will stop asking questions and move forward with the overview of Trello. Trello is a web-based project management application that uses a visual system of cards and lists. Awesome. How can I build a Kanban board? All right, let's build a Kanban board. To start, you can click on the plus add a list button on the left side of your screen. This will create your first list. Which list should I, I mean, be more... Uh comprehensive, tell me exactly what I need to do and elaborate. Okay, to create a Kanban board, you should start with a list of to-do items, then another of in-progress items, and a final list for done items. You can name your first list to-do. After typing in the name, click on the add list button. Uh, correct now. Yes, it looks like you've created the three lists needed to create a basic Kanban board. To do, in progress, and done. Now you can start adding cards to your lists. Can you instruct me exactly about what I'm seeing here? What, is, what does each button stand for? Certainly, let's go over the options you see on a Trello card. At the top of the card, you see the title, test, and below it, the option in list to do. You can move the card to another list using the drop-down menu. You can also watch the card to receive notifications about its changes, and you can add a description to your card using the formatting tools that you see available. On the right-hand side of the window, you have the option to join the card, view members, add labels, add a checklist, set a date, add an attachment, select a cover image for the card, and create custom fields. 
Lastly, under that, you see the power ups option and the automation options. What are some best practices for writing a checklist in Trello? Good question. When creating Come again? a checklist in Trello, it is best to keep the When writing checklist items, you should keep them concise and action oriented. It's also useful to start the item with a verb. For instance, add an item is a good start. This Yes, exactly like that. Add item is a great way to start a checklist item. Awesome, great. Thank you so much for the explanation. Is there anything specific that I need to know about Power Ups? Power Ups in Trello are like apps that add extra features to your boards. They can help you connect Trello to other tools, enhance the board's capabilities, and improve your workflow. You can explore different Power Ups under the Categories section to see what options they offer. What are your thoughts about these three Power Ups? Okay, the three power-ups you are showing are the checklist summary, the Gaunt chart, and the service desk power-ups. The checklist summary is useful if you want a bird's eye view of all of your checklists in a board. The Gaunt chart allows you to better visualize your project timeline. Finally, the service desk power-up allows users to manage client requests directly within a Trello board. Each one provides different functionality to the Trello board, depending on the use case. Amazing, thank you so much. Awesome. So we will pause this. In this case, you just saw, I got a brief understanding about Trello and it instructed me. Now I want to adjust this. Start a new. Also give system instructions. You are an expert IT and developer with 20 years experience specializing in VS Code short So now I want to learn VS Code using this tool and I gave it the specific system instructions. Now let's start again and see it's going to be different. I mean better I'm hoping it will be. Okay, it sounds like you're working on something new and you're hoping for improvements. What exactly are you working on? Can you teach me about VS Code? Sure, I can teach you about versus code. Do you want to start with the basics? Or are you interested in specific features or shortcuts? So mostly about what is the difference between these. Okay, it looks like you're asking about the different menus in Chate versus code. The main ones are file, edit, selection, view, go, run, terminal, and help. Would you like me to go through each one? Exactly. Or would you like... Okay, let's start with the file menu. This is where you find options for creating new files, opening existing ones, saving your work, and managing your workspace. Would you like to dive deeper into any specific option in that menu? Perhaps let's go into the settings and me know. Settings tell me exactly. Last. All right, let's dive into the settings. The settings allow you to customize versus code to your liking. Are there any specific adjustments you're curious about, or would you like me to guide you through some common options like autosave, theme, or font size? Yeah, so what is Workbench? Bread. Okay, the Workbench in Doodor versus Code refers to the overall layout and appearance of the editor. Breadcrumbs are a navigation aid that shows the current file's path at the top of the editor. Is there anything specific about them you want to know? Maybe what is Zen mode? I have no, no about this. Can you elaborate about this? Explain all of these. Certainly, Zen mode is designed to minimize distractions and maximize your focus on coding. When enabled, it can center the editor, put the workbench in full screen mode, hide the activity bar, and hide line numbers. Does this clarify its purpose? Anything else? Optimizing your opinion? Okay, when it comes to optimizing your versus code experience, I'd recommend looking at a few things in settings. Autosave, which you already saw, is very helpful to make sure that your work is saved periodically. 
The font size is also a good thing to adjust to your personal preferences. The last one is the extensions that you can add since they provide a lot of extra functionality that can improve the coding experience. Would you like to explore extensions? Yes, what are some common extensions that uh, everyone should have? Okay, some very useful and popular extensions are Prettier for code formatting, ESLint for code linting and error detection, and GitLens, which enhances Git integration. These are widely used and highly recommended. Are you interested in any of them specifically? The Prettier that we were supposed to install. Yes, the Prettier Code Formatter extension is the one I was referring to. It's a great choice for automatically formatting your code. Would you like help installing it? No, it's fine. Thank you so much. Okay, that's pretty You're welcome. much it. So it's just a very useful way to learn stuff on the fly and also optimize workflows. I'm, I'm using it very often for technical stuff like I showed a video about how I used it to optimize Cloudflare, how I used this in order to set new uh, events in Google Tag. So instead of going back and forth with the tutorial, you can ask very specific questions about your specific use case. Um, and this is very, very valuable. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe. Obviously, so, till next time, on automating.